Hello and welcome. In this video, you are going to learn how you can save data into database. Also, we are going to solve some of the common error you might see. First, first thing is like I am not going to record the video in the perfect way. I know some of the errors are happening and I am going to fix one by one for you. So I have already done all of these steps behind the scene, but the thing is, you have to see the error and you have to know why it happens. So you should know how to fix it. That's why I want to show you some errors and I am going to fix it for you. For now, when I click at the wishlist, nothing is going to happen. I just want to send an AJAX request to the backend of the, the website. In the previous video, we learned how we can uh, create the database. We have migrated and everything was just fine. So in this video, I'm going to continue my work. So here, I'm going to clear the terminal. Also, we will come to the app here. What I did was like before I re start recording the video, I deleted the database. I will migrate the database again. So that is a clean database for now. Now here is the thing that I'm going to do. I, if I click on this one, I want to send an AJAX request to our app. So how you are sending AJAX request? You can use um, jQuery for sending AJAX request. Since I'm not using jQuery, I can use Axios. Axios is like the easiest way to send or like AJAX request in the different ways like post, fetch, or put any type of them. So I will come to my app here and using npm, I'm going to install it. While this is installing, also I'm going to run npm run watch in my app. Because I'm writing some JavaScript, it should compile them for me. I will come to the resources, to the Code Inspire app, and here is what I'm going to write. First thing first, I'm going to import Axios and assign it to window variable. So win window dot Axios is going to equal to require. I don't know when I record video, I cannot type properly. Other days, like I am writing super fast. So if I save it, now I should have access to Axios in my window variable. Now, if someone click on the wish list, we have already handled the click event. It is going to send an AJAX request. For now, I'm going to comment this line. So that should run on the success. Here is how you can do this one. Axios is really easy. You can see axios.post and this is going to send a post request. The first parameter is going to be the URL you are going to send a post request. Now I am going to send it to API slash let's say at to wishlist. We haven't added this API yet, but I'm going to do it quickly. The second parameter, it accepts the data you are sending. So it can be an object or anything you want. For us, we are going to send a customer ID. So it, it should be customer underscore ID. And as I said, this is should this should be an object. Also the product ID and it should be equal to product ID. This is totally fine. You can put the same name here. So this is fine. And when it was successful, it is going to run another function called then. If it threw an error, it is going to run a function called catch. So if it was successful, it will come with a response. So what the response is going to do is, I'm going to say if, the if it was successful, just console.log the response. This video is going to be a little longer, so, but you will learn a lot. So I will just say, response that's fine but if i get an error it is going to throw me an error so the error should be solved the same way now i'm going to just quickly paste it here and instead of this error this should be but i will write a capital error so i should understand this is my own error not my error, the application error. So if I save it for now, that is totally fine. It is sending a request to this API. But if I come to my app, and let's check if it is sending the AJAX request. Coming to my app, in the network tab, I'm listening only to XHR request, which is the JavaScript uh, AJAX request. Click on wishlist. It is sending the request, but this API is not correct. So make sure do you notice this one? When I send this, it is going to go to the my shop, not my app. Check this one. This is my shop. It is not the app. So it is not sending the app. 
because this script is running in the client side you know this script is running in the team when i say in the code when i say slash api slash wishlist it assumes like i am in the front store and i'm sending requests to the same store so here is what you can do it should send to your app what you can do is you can come to your shopify dashboard grab the url here and you can store it in a variable here i'm going to use const and i'm going to say app domain is equal to the domain that i have also i'm going to remove this slash and instead of uh, api only you are going to say it is going to send the request to the app domain slash whatever it is and it's going to send to this information now there are different ways you can do this but this is the easiest way i can store it here and throughout my javascript file all i always have access to my app domain it is fine for now now if i come this time again it is going to work fine but we don't have this api so let's create the api first before we get another error i'm going to the routes basically you can write it in the web you can write a route and say if someone send a post request to this url you can respond it here but i'm not going to do that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to write down in the api here so api is where you can write all your um, route for the api you know in the previous video we have created our controller for the wishlist and this is the wishlist and I'll keep this open because I need it and then I will come again to the route API here so here is where I'm going to write my route and this is going to respond the first thing you might notice is okay since this route is the API it should be exactly like this route right it must have the can like the middleware so first of all like the shop should be authenticated I'm going to show you some errors also that might happen through this process you added this one and then you are going to say if someone send a, re a post request to the URL and here you do not say API because it will automatically prefix that for you because you are in the uh, API the PHP file it is automatically going to uh, prefix this one so what you can do is you can say hey if someone send an uh, Ajax request to this API then you are going to the wish list controller uh, at store store is the function we are calling so if i come here scrolling down this is the store function which is store data to the database for now if i return success to see if this is working or not i will save this one also i will save the api now i know everything is working fine here is the point it will send a request to this url okay i get an error here so I should close the semicolon now it is going to send a request to this URL. Now, before you do this one, let's check out how our route was going to look like. I will clear the terminal here and I will use the command of PHP artisan route list. And this is going to list all the route. Check this one API slash add to wish list. As I said, it is going to automatically prefix your API. I didn't route write the api before this one since i am the in api file it is going to prefix there for you so that's fine i am sending to this url and everything should look fine right i am sending this information and i don't need this information currently but for now it should go to the store function and here is the store function the store function is going to return success but if i come to my app here let's refresh it go to the console and see what error we have also, you can stay in the network tab, clean up everything, click on the wishlist, you will get an error called login. It means you have to be login. That's correct. I'm sending a request from here and it says you have to be login. As you know, this is the first mistake we make. Like most people make it bad. Here is how you can fix it. You should not put it inside the middleware auth because in the front store, you don't need authentication because any user can add product to the wishlist they, they are not authenticated and that is totally fine because we are not sending an, a sensitive information we just add a record to the database this is secure i save it for now now let's see you should get another error i will save it refresh it now everything should work fine right but if you click on the wishlist 
it is going to send it to the wish list here let's check this out it will come with a success uh, message here now so far everything is working fine but if any any error happen especially the core policy I'm going to show you how you can fix it for now it, it doesn't didn't happen for me because uh, before I record the video it happened I know why it happened and how I can fix it but for now it is working fine let's continue the work and see what else we can do so far everything is fine and everything is looking good now here is another thing we can do we can come to the wish list and console.log like the request that you have here you can console.log for, for for PHP the DD is going to be the console.log right or die and dump which is specific to Laravel but return is working just fine for now if you say request all it is going to return all the data we have sent for us let's check this out and it is also going to return a JSON version of it I will refresh my page now you don't have to refresh it because we bring the changes in the back end and if it should work fine click on the wish list it comes with the request and this is the data this is the data we send for them and it is going to return this information I don't need to save this like return this information all I have to do is save this in the database for now I will directly save it I don't care about the validation for now but that is what we do in the next video but for now here is how you do you can use wish list and you can use the create function and create is going to accept um, an array since you have access to this one laravel automatically do that for you you can just pass it here and then you can say success this is fine save it now it should save it to the database since we are using the create function of course it is going to throw an error for us so before I see the error I just want to fix it it is going to uh, like you know mass assignment assess assignment exception is we if you are using the create function you cannot directly add data to your database you have to specify the fillable property in your model that is when you can store those information I will come to the wish list put this here and what are the information I need here customer ID basically I am telling Laravel that this information are safe you can safely save this information in database I save it I use a lot of save now so refresh the page mm, okay now let's see if it is adding our data to database now I get an error like 500 error let's check out what is the error you click on this one it is a post request that's fine this is the payload but I get an error if you check the error it says mm, inserting data to the database shop ID is not available that's correct shop ID is not available what is the reason for this one because we didn't specify shop ID whenever we use like request all it is going to say like I'm going to save all of this information to database and when you check the database like our table it says where is the shop ID we never specify that this should be a nullable property when you say nullable it means it is acceptable if it is empty which is not what we want right so what is the, what is the shop ID and where you can get this one where shop ID is basically the shop URL from here now how you can get this one it is very easy in Shopify in any Shopify store if you come here and write the Shopify here you have access to uh, to the window variable it is already assigned by Shopify you don't have to worry about this one if you see window dot Shopify as you can see you have access to this one dot shop is going to give you the domain name cool that's easy right I will come to my JavaScript and I say okay I'm going to send another information also which is the shop underscore ID and this is going to use the Shopify object dot shop easy stuff you save it and now you come here now this is some of the error you might see like core policy block let's see if it works I will clean up everything refresh it click wish list yes it was successful and now do you think the data was added to the database let's check this out 
I will come to my database and I will refresh it for now. It was coming like from previous uh, test I did. Here is the data I have added. Okay, cool. Everything is working fine. For those of you who might get some error, that might be related to the core policy. For example, if I make an um, let's say a mistake in the backend, it is going to throw an error like that. You save it. Let's check this one out. And I'm going to show you how you can fix that too. So if I refresh my page, now that error is 100% gonna happen for everyone. I click on this one. This is the error that we get, but this is not the exact error you might see here. This is the error that we are making. But in the console, this is um, something that you might see regarding the core policy. This is 500 error and it is related to the server. But if you're um, making a request to the server and it is giving you a core policy error, this is how you can fix it. It is like a common error you might get. It always tells you how you can fix it. You can create a file called core. It is very easy. You can read this article and then you can add this line of code to the core uh, middleware that you have created. All you have to do is, and this is where you add to your kernel file. If you read the instruction, it is really easy. And then you can add it to your core policy. If this happen in future, I will try to fix it for you. But before I record this video, this was happening for me and I knew how to fix it. That's why I quickly fixed this one. And I was thinking, Maybe this is happening for everyone, so I have to show them how you can fix it. If you see a core policy error, that is how you can fix it. But this is working fine for now. Now, if I refresh my page, I already have the data in my record. This is the customer ID, the product ID. But there is an issue. If I click on the wish list, okay, let me fix my error to see everything is working fine. So far, if I refresh my database, this is the only record I have. But refresh the page, add it to the wish list. It is coming with a success message. But if I check the database, it duplicated the data. Now, this is not what we want, right? Uh, how you can fix this one? Now, the same customer have the same product in the two like rows. So how you can fix this one? Think about this. Which one of these, these data should be unique? Shop ID, customer ID, or product ID? Hmm. This is something that you should think about this one, but I will fix it in the next video. I hope it has been informative. I know it was a long video, but that is what happens with coding. So I have to teach you live coding. So I will see you in the next video and let's see how we can figure out about the database issue.